Hello students, in today's video, we are going to study about the adrenocorticotropic hormone, in short ACTH. We will discuss functions, regulation of secretion of ACTH and its disorders namely Cushing syndrome and Addison's disease. Now, ACTH is the adrenocorticotropic hormone. It is a peptide hormone. Now, as the name suggests, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone is a tropic hormone. It stimulates the release of hormones from adrenal cortex. Now, hormone re hormones released are mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and androgen. So, look at this figure. This is a zoomed view of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is located towards the ba base of the brain and this is pituitary gland located just below the hypothalamus. Now pituitary gland has two lobes. This is anterior pituitary and this is posterior pituitary. Now paraventricular nucleus of hypothalamus secretes corticotropin releasing hormone in short CRH. CRH stimulates anterior pituitary to secrete ACTH. ACTH further stimulates adrenal cortex to release mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and androgens. Now this is the adrenal gland. It consists of inner medulla. Medulla is shown here in the red color and it consists of outer adrenal cortex. So this cortex is termed as adrenal cortex. Now, this medulla is composed of around 20% of the total adrenal tissue, while the rest 80% of the adrenal tissue is the adrenal cortex. Now, adrenal medulla is made up of neuroendocrine tissue and it produces neurotransmitters namely adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now, let's uh, focus on adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex is stimulated by adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adrenal cortex is made up of three layers. The outermost layer, this thin outermost layer is called as zona glomerulosa. It produces a type of steroidal hormones called as mineralocorticoids. Now most important hormone produced here is the aldosterone. Now angiotensin 2 is the most important stimuli that regulates synthesis of aldosterone from zona glomerulosa. Now the primary or the main function of uh, aldosterone is to maintain water and electrolyte balance. Now site of action of aldosterone is the kidneys and as we all know kidneys are made up of nephron and nephron is made up of a proximal tubule, uh, the distal tubule and the collecting ducts. Now whenever the blood volume or the blood pressure falls, the secretion of aldosterone increases and aldosterone stimulates reabsorption of uh, sodium. So sodium is reabsorbed, the reabsorption of sodium increases in the distal tubules and collecting duct of nephrons. Now, reabsorption of sodium is followed by the passive reabsorption of water. Now, this sodium and water is reabsorbed from the nephron into the blood. So, the reduced blood volume now increases and becomes normal. Similarly, the reduced blood pressure now increases and becomes normal. Aldosterone also increases excretion of potassium. So, this is how aldosterone regulates water and electrolyte balance. Now, this innermost thin layer is the zona reticularis. Now, it secretes sex steroidal hormones called as androgens. Now, the main androgens secreted by this layer are dehydroepiandrosterone, in short DHEA, and androstenedione. Now, both these androgens are produced in very small amounts. Now these androgens are actually the precursors, uh, these are the precursor hormones that are further converted into testosterone and estradiol. And the main function of these uh, androgens is to control libido and to control the sex drive. 
Now, as we know that gonads, uh, that is the testes and ovaries, produce sex hormones. Now, this zona reticular reticularis can be considered as to be a non-gonadal source of sex hormones. Now, after zona reticularis, uh, let's talk about the middle layer. This middle layer is called as a zona fasciculata and this is the thickest of all the three layers and it produces glucocorticoids. Now, zona fasciculata produces glucocorticoids. Now, the primary or the most important glucocorticoid is the cortisol. Now, these glucocorticoids they are very important during stress. During stress, uh, like for example, shock, shock due to a trauma, trauma like uh, an accident or a death uh, causes shock. Then uh, emotional stress, fever, hypoglycemia, during all these conditions, the secretion of uh, glucocorticoids or the secretion of cortisol increases. Normally, physiologically, it's the circadian rhythm that is the sleep wake cycle that uh, regulates the secretion of cortisol. But during stress, the secretion of cortisol increases and it prepares the body to fight with the stress. Now, during stress, the glucose requirement of the body cells increases and glucocorticoids, as the name suggests, are the cortical hormones produced by the adrenal cortex that primarily regulate metabolism of glucose. So, metabolism of glucose is regulated by glucocorticoids and these hormones thus increase the blood glucose levels. Now, glucocorticoids induce increased breakdown of proteins. Proteins are broken down to amino acids and these amino acids acts like a new source and these amino acids are converted to glucose. That is, glucose are produced from a new source that is, glucose are produced from the amino acids. Now, glucocorticoids also induce lipolysis and thus fats are broken down to fatty acids and these fatty acids are used as a source of energy. So, as the uh, amino acids are converted to glucose, uh, glucocorticoids increase the process of gluconeogenesis. So, in summary, we can say that the main function of glucocorticoids is to increase blood glucose levels so as to prepare the body to fight stress because during the stress, the requirement of glucose by the body cells increases. Now, let's understand importance of uh, glucocorticoids with respect to treatment of diseases or clinical importance of glucocorticoids. Now, at high doses, uh, glucocorticoids produce anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive effect. Now, synthetic corticosteroids uh, like uh, prednisone are used as anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive agents. Now, how this anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive effect is produced? Let's see to this. Now, glucocorticoids suppress synthesis of pro-inflammatory cytokines. That means glucocorticoids suppress synthesis of inflammatory mediators like interleukin-1, tumor necrotic factor alpha, interferon gamma. Now, suppression of synthesis of these inflammatory mediators produces anti-inflammatory effect. And therefore, drugs like uh, prednisone are used in the management of inflammatory diseases like asthma. Now, in addition to this, glucocorticoids also decrease number and functioning of white blood cells. White blood cells like lymphocytes, macrophages, monocytes. Now, as we all know that these WBCs produce immunity in the body. Now, suppression of the functioning and activation of these WBCs produces immunosuppressive effect. And thus, prednisone 
is also used in the management of autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and these corticosteroids are also used in organ transplantation now increased corticosteroids or uh, increased cortisol in the blood also delays wound healing so uh, these are the clinical uses of uh, synthetic glucocorticoids uh, which are termed as corticosteroids for example prednisone prednisolone so these are the functions of uh, glucocorticoids now let's understand regulation of secretion of cortisol so look at this figure now as we know circadian rhythm regulates the sleep wake cycle of the body now this circadian rhythm it induces natural release of uh, uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone from anterior pituitary in the body now acth levels are at peak in the early morning that is uh, peak levels of uh, acth are found between 6 to 9 am and these levels decline during the day and these are found to be lowest at night between 11 pm to 2 am so it is the circadian rhythm that causes release of uh, corticotropin releasing hormone and this cortico releasing hormone further stimulates uh, release of acth from the anterior pituitary now acth further stimulates uh, the release of uh, cortisol or the release of glucocorticoids from the uh, adrenal cortex now another very important point to remember is this as we have already discussed stress stress causes enhanced secretion of corticotropin releasing hormone and that causes enhanced uh, secretion of cortisol in the blood from adrenal cortex now increased cortisol that is concentration of cortisol more than the normal sends negative feedback signals to anterior pituitary and also to the hypothalamus so this reduces secretion of cortisol and the elevated or the increased cortisol levels are brought to normal in the blood so this is how uh, levels of uh, cortisol are regulated in the blood now let's study the pathological involvements of ACTH so first we are going to study Cushing syndrome now as we have already understood by now that uh, ACTH stimulates anterior pituitary to release glucocorticoids and one of the main glucocorticoid is the cortisol so Cushing syndrome is an endocrine disorder that is caused due to sustained high levels of cortisol in the blood that means the levels of cortisol remain high in the blood for a very long period of time now what can be the reasons for these high cortisol levels in the blood now the reasons could be exogenous or endogenous now most of the time the high cortisol levels are produced uh, because of the chronic administration of uh, drugs like uh, prednisone now as already discussed prednisone is a synthetic glucocorticoid and it mimics action of cortisol so chronic long term administration of uh, drugs like uh, prednisone for example in patients of organ transplantation can cause cushing syndrome another reason uh, could be endogenous for example because of pituitary adenomas now pituitary adenomas are benign tumors of pituitary gland that produce excess acth and this excess acth further causes excessive secretion of cortisol so these are the reasons behind the cushing syndrome now let's understand symptoms of uh, cushing syndrome now as we know cortisol causes breakdown of proteins proteins are broken down to amino acids and those amino acids are further converted into glucose so this increased cortisol causes excessive breakdown or excessive catabolism of proteins 
Now, as we know, skeletal muscles are made up of proteins. So, protein breakdown causes uh, muscle wasting. That is a progressive weakness and loss of muscle muscle mass. And this also causes a thinning of arms and legs. Now, it further causes easy bruising and thinning of the skin. Now, in addition to this, uh, there is altered fat distribution. The fat tissue redistribution causes central obesity. That is, the fat deposits on the belly. Now, in addition to this, uh, the face becomes round, which is called as moon face. And the fat also deposits on the back uh, between the shoulder blades. And this is called as buffalo hump. Now, in addition to this, cortisol also increases sensitivity of blood vessels to adrenaline and noradrenaline, which causes high blood pressure. Now, high uh, cortisol also increases blood sugar, uh, increases the levels of uh, glucose in the blood and that increases the risk of diabetes. High cortisol also causes weak bones and that increases the risk of osteoporosis. Now, in addition to this, as already discussed, high cortisol is an immunosuppressant. So, susceptibility to infections also increases. So, these all are the symptoms of Cushing syndrome. Now, let's discuss causes and symptoms of Addison's disease. Now, Addison's disease occurs due to less secretion of uh, cortisol and aldosterone by adrenal cortex. Now, this deficiency of uh, these hormones is because of inability of adrenal cortex to produce these hormones. And therefore, this disease is termed as primary ad adrenal insufficiency. Now, since adrenal cortex is not functioning, Secretion of ACTH increases in an attempt to somehow st stimulate adrenal cortex and produce these hormones. So, distinguishing feature of this disorder is high levels of ACTH. So, high levels of ACTH signifies that the person might be suffering from Addison's disease. Now, let's understand the causes of Addison's disease. Now, main cause is the destruction of adrenal cortex. Now, extent of severity of destruction decides the symptoms of disease. That is, if one, two or all the three layers of adrenal cortex are destroyed. Now, autoimmune destruction of adrenal cortex is the most important cause of Addison's disease. Adrenal cortex could also be destroyed by diseases like tuberculosis. Now, low levels of cortisol in the blood produces symptoms like uh, low blood glucose, hypotension, weight loss and fatigue. Now, as aldosterone regulates water and electrolyte balance, reduced aldosterone can cause uh, metabolic acidosis, nausea, vomiting and uh, dehydration. Now, damage to a zona reticularis reduces the secretion of androgens and reduced androgens can cause loss of hair and reduced sex drive in the woman. So, these are the symptoms of Addison's disease. Now, let's understand uh, use of ACTH. ACTH is primarily used for the diagnosis or for the identification of disorders of pituitary adrenal axis. Now, 25 international units of ACTH is injected IV. Now, as we know that ideally, ACTH stimulates adrenal cortex to release cortisol. So, if the levels of plasma cortisol rise, that indicates that uh, adrenal cortex is functional. On the contrary, if uh, levels of cortisol do not rise in the plasma, it indicates that uh, adrenal cortex is non-functional. So, ACTH test is a diagnostic test for primary 
adrenal insufficiency where adrenal cortex is damaged and does not secrete cortisol even after the administration of ACTH. So this is in brief on ACTH, its functions, regulation, pathological involvement of ACTH in Cushing syndrome, Addison's disease and diagnostic use of ACTH. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.